Hi, everybody. This is Jerry Gerritsen, Tapia Law. We're going to be uh, diving, uh, doing a deep dive into some of these uh, laws that affect our immigration uh, modern day. But what I want to do is go back into the history of our immigration laws and kind of take a closer look and look at some of the policies behind the black letter law. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and read this. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I want to look at this, uh, uh, and I'm not going to necessarily go into order, we, we just, uh, or go in order, we just did a brief overview of all of the immigration uh, significant uh, immigration laws from the founding of the country to present day. <clears throat> and um, I'm using the uh, Kurtz Bonds uh, uh, source book, Immigration. Um, that's for immigration attorneys. This is our Bible. Okay, just so you know. <laughs> um, so I want to talk uh, today about the as an incident of sovereignty. So this refers to the uh, Chinese exclusion case. And of course, early on in our country, one of the first major uh, immigration laws was the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. So not real early, uh, provided the exclusion of persons from China. And that was repealed and that, and that state, that was good law until 18 uh, or until 1943, uh, right in the middle of the uh, World War II. It was repealed December 17th, 1987, or, I'm sorry, 1943. Um, so let's let's go into that. And right off the bat, it sounds and, and you would think that, oh, that's a racist scenario where you're just uh, picking a group of people, Chinese specifically, and excluding them from the country. So let's 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 uh, on its face. It looks like it's not a good thing. Right. So let's let's dive a little bit deeper and see the policy behind what would how can this uh, law become law? Uh, I mean, is it, uh, why did it become law and how? So here it is here. This case, it was based on the case. And it held that the power to exclude foreigners is an incident of sovereignty. It is an accepted maxim in international law that every sovereign nation has the power as an inherent as inherent in sovereignty and essential to self preservation to forbid the entrance of foreigners with its dominions or to admit them only in such cases as upon such conditions as it may seem fit to prescribe. And the idea is this. <clears throat> This law, this case lays out, or the case lays out the policy behind the law, which is this is the United States. It's a sovereign country. It can choose who to allow into the country and who to exclude. And the idea is that it's not specifically looking at a race of people and saying, because of your race, we're not letting you in the country. I think the idea is that the conditions around the situation uh, makes it wise for, for a sovereign country uh, with, the, with the idea of self-preservation to exclude certain peoples for a period of time. Now, today, that, that, that rule is, we repealed that in 1943 for whatever reason. And I'm sure there's a, a whole lot of details that are in there that we could talk for days, weeks, and months. Um, 
So for whatever reason, in 1883, um, the government looked at Chinese and maybe it was a scenario where they're having civil war. And, and so you had a, a big influx, not sure. But for whatever reason, they excluded specifically Chinese. And uh, the premise, the policy behind it is we can do this because we're a sovereign nation and we're looking to uh, keep this union, right? It's a great uh, country if you can keep it. And for, uh, again, uh, don't know the details, and this is something we can dive, but it's interesting, we can dive deeper into. But for some reason, uh, the migrant, the Chinese migrants were, were a threat to this country in some way. And um, so the point I'm trying to make here is that whatever the threat is, whatever the situation is, if the, co if the government deems um, a, a a group of people or, or uh, a scenario of immigration to be detrimental to the country as a sovereign country, the country has a right to say, you can't come in. Now, um, I want to look at this case and, and uh, glean some. So next time we talk, I'll, I'll glean more out of this. But I think the idea is that whatever was going on, uh, the, the officials at that time said, this is, we need to save our country. And uh, sovereignty of a country is, and not just the United States, this is a, a universal idea that every country has the right to make decisions about immigration for the good of the people of their country for the sought and and the power comes from uh, the the idea of sovereignty that we're allowed to make these decisions to keep the country a good and safe and, and you know, place uh, that's going to be functioning and for whatever reason uh, they came up with this uh, law that says we need to keep these folks out and uh, that's going to be an interesting study, and I'll, I'll go into that a lot deeper as we go along. Okay, thank you so much. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.